Recently, I was speaking to my brother, and he told me he went to the dentist, and the dentist put him down in the chair, and one uh, new phenomenon was, as he leaned back in the chair, there was a screen uh, up, up on the wall above his head, and the dentist said, well, what would you like to watch, uh, CNN, the news, uh, sports? And, uh, you know, a music video, and, and for my brother, he was, he was a little bit disoriented by this, and he said, well, I guess the news. And so the dentist began to work on him as my brother uh, was watching the news. Uh, recently, I read an article about um, a man that, that wanted to, to, to sort of step out of society, and he, and he um, went on retreat for three years into a Buddhist monastery. And when they asked him, when he came out, they asked him, you know, well, what's, what's different about the world? And the first thing he said was, screens. <laughs> he just said, there's, there's now screens everywhere. And, and, and we can see this happening more and more here, here in Chisinau. And, and I mean, in, in the States, if I want to go and, and wait for the bus, I go to the bus stop and there's a screen there at the stop and I can, I can enjoy the screen. And then I get on the bus and there's a screen on the bus. And maybe I'm on my way to uh, the shopping mall, and so um, as I'm passing through the center of town, there's these super screens all over the place communicating with me. And then, of course, um, you know, just in case I'm not bored shopping, I can go into the different stores, and there's screens everywhere in the stores. Now, now don't worry. If there's no screen in the nearby vicinity, uh, someone can, you know, simply reach into their pocket and pull out a little mini screen at, at all times. And, and so screens were invented to, to transport us into another uh, narrative, to, to open up for us uh, um, another, um, another world. And they were invented as a, as a communal device. We would sit around the television sets with our families and we would, we would enter into another story. And so with, a, with this abundance of, of screens, with this abundance of stories everywhere, you really, you really um, need to ask yourself the question if um, we desire to be where we are. So let me see if this is, uh, this is up. Do we want to be where we are is a question that I have to ask this morning. I mean, so I don't want to be the negative. I, what I don't want to be this morning is the, like, the, um, the, the, the anti-technology guy. Like, eh, no technology, bad. I, I don't want to be that this morning. I, I love the Internet. I mean, I, I love the fact that, that I, can, I can come home from work and, and just and, and sit down and think, you know, I want to listen to the global news. Yes, I'm in Cahul, Moldova, but I want to know what's going on in North Africa. I want to know what's going on in Bangladesh. And so I, I, I sit down at that, that internet and I open up the global news and then, hmm, I noticed that uh, somebody updated uh, their Facebook status. So I'm, I'm over there on Facebook and I'm checking out the Facebook and oh yeah, I got to go over to the global news. So I, I'm opening up the global news and I'm looking at the global news and then someone tweets me and, and lets me know what's going on in New York City and what my, my brother's up to. And so I start instant messaging with someone over there in New York City. And, oh yeah, yeah, I, wanna, I want to download that, that most recent podcast that I'm so excited about. And so I'm, I'm downloading the podcast and 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 I'm aimlessly, the, the term surfing is this idea that these waves are, are carrying me. These waves are carrying me, and, and I'm, I'm being carried by these aimless uh, desires through the Internet. And it's, 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 this, um, it's this wonderful feeling that I can be uh, linked in. You know, I can, be, I can be connected at all times. I can be... Um, you know, linked into what's, what's going on all, not just here, but everywhere. And so, you know, God forbid I would go to a coffee shop that doesn't have Wi-Fi because, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm there to get some coffee, but I want to be linked in. I want to be able to go to the coffee shop and connect and, and be connected to, to, uh, to everything that's going on all around me, right? And so um, we, uh, we have to ask ourselves, um, we have to ask ourselves why. We have to ask ourselves why. I mean, in, in America today, 
many families, uh, this, is a, this is a statistic that many families are sitting around the dinner table with multiple screens. <laughs> and they're um, with multiple different members of the family gaming or texting or talking. And, 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 and you have to ask yourself, are, are, are they really there together um, at the dinner table? But, but really, the, 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 internet, the internet can, it, it promises us that we can, no matter where we are, no matter where we are, we have all of this available to us. We can be fully linked in. We, can, we don't just have to be here. We can be linked into everywhere. And um, we can have everything. We can have everything instantly. What, what is boredom? Um, well, the Webster's English Dictionary uh, defines boredom as the state of being weary, tired. Uh, in the French, the word in the French is uh, ennui. It's, it's to be annoyed. It's just this subtle annoyance. It's the state of being weary and restless because of, of a lack of, of interest. Because of, of a lack of interest. And, and, and I think that, that if, if we try to think about in our own lives, when am I bored? When when do I feel bored? I think about uh, a job I had back in the States, and I had this job. I was so passionate about this job. But we had these, these uh, weekly staff meetings. And it was like in these staff meetings, I just, you know, I was, I, I was, I was trying to engage, but I, I, I just was so wearied by them. I was, so, I was so restless in them, you know. And I think about even what Kira was talking about in, in the classroom, how a, lot of, how a lot of you students, I mean, I hope that, that, that you feel engaged, but I, I know that in, in the high schools in, in Kahul, you can feel the, the restlessness. You can feel the... And so what, what's going on? What's going on? The, the, the question is, you know, even sometimes I come home from work, and, and it's just I'm in that routine, and it's just I get home, and I feel restlessness. I want to cook dinner. I want to... Uh, and I'm hungering for something. I, I either have a lack of interest or a confusion about what I'm interested in. And, and I think I'm hungering for some sort of pleasure, for some sort of sati satiation. I, I want something to satisfy me, but I don't really know what's going to satisfy me. So I, I'm, I'm restless. And, and, and so um, boredom, is, boredom is a little bit different, though. It's this, so it's this pain-pleasure cycle, is what I'm trying to say. There's something happening, and I want pleasure, I want satisfaction, but I don't know how to get it. But, but boredom is a little bit uh, different. It's, so it's anxiety, but it's a little bit different than other forms of anxiety. And I just wanted to, to, to touch on this briefly. So um, guilt is anxiety about the past. You know, it's, it's an anxiety that we feel in the present about something that already happened. And, and fear is an anxiety about the future. It's, it's something that, that uh, intimidates us, something that, that we think, I, I don't know how that's going to go, and that we're feeling an anxiety about the future. But boredom is unique in the fact that boredom is anxiety in the present. It's anxiety that we're experiencing about what is happening right now around us. And, and for all of these types of anxieties, we have coping me mechanisms. We have ways of treating the anxiety. So there's a lot of, of things connected about guilt and shame and ways that people are able to try to justify their actions. And, and, but with boredom, but with boredom, how are we coping with this present restlessness, this present weariness? And um, I, would, I would argue that in this restlessness, that we're experiencing, it's actually on the rise. I would argue that, that this restlessness is, is growing. Um, the, uh, a, a statistic that I recently read that was actually shocking to me is that there's a, there's a Kaiser Research Institute in the United States, and they surveyed a number of families and teenagers to measure how much time um, eight-year-olds to 18-year-olds, so children, so, so teens, so young people, how much time a day they were spending just in front of a screen, a handheld screen, 
uh, a television screen, a, a video game screen. The number was seven and a half hours a day of these uh, 2,000 young people, they, these random young people. Seven and a half hours a day in front of some sort of screen. And that, that didn't even include um, other forms of electronic media they were engaging in. They said that if you include all of the forms of electronic media, it's 11 hours a day. 11 hours a day being plugged in, being plugged into some place other than uh, just here, other than just here. Um, so this, this restlessness is increasing. You can read statistics about it on the internet about restlessness and boredom at work. Um, we're experiencing a, a deeper restlessness. And, um, and so I, we, we, I came across this quote I want to share with you. Why? Why, why are we experiencing this? And this is a, an author, a, fa a famous uh, American author, a brilliant author named David Foster Wallace. And he says, maybe it's because dullness is intrinsically painful. He says, maybe dullness uh, is associated with some sort of psychic pain. I mean, pain is something physical, it's something organic, but, but, but uh, boredom is, is, an, is some sort of psychological pain. It's an emotional pain that we're experiencing. And he says it, it, that, that this dullness is associated with a pain, a psychological pain, because something that's dull fails to provide enough stimulation to distract people from something deeper, from some other deeper type of pain. This is what Wallace says that's always there. So let's flesh this out a little bit. Let's, let's try to understand this a little bit. So here I am. I'm, 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 uh, I'm downloading stuff. I'm, I'm, uh, on the, I'm on the internet and I'm, and I'm uh, listening to my iPod and I'm, I'm uploading songs and um, at the same time, I'm pulling out my mobile device and I'm sending texts. And, and I don't really know why I am. I mean, I don't really know what my, my purpose is for being there. I'm confused about what I'm interested in this moment. I kind of got on the internet for one reason, but now I'm doing something completely different. And, and so I'm bored. I'm bored. I'm kind of, uh, I'm, I'm feeling restless. I'm feeling weary. And what Wallace says is that my, my boredom is producing all of this restless activity, but that beneath the boredom, somewhere, somewhere on some deep unconscious level, uh, I'm in pain. I'm, um, I'm, I'm trying to manage some sort of deeper restlessness, some, some deeper sort of existential restlessness that all of us are spending a lot of our time uh, trying to avoid thinking about. Now, this is, this is compelling for me. This is interesting for me because I'm really, uh, I'm really interested in trying to understand what it is that I desire. What do I desire? Um, be, because if you think about it, if you don't know what you're hungry for, but you're doing lots of things to feed yourself, but you haven't really thought, what am I hungry for, what, is, what actually is, is my appetite, uh, you can never meet the hunger. If you think about it like this way, um, distractions can never answer the question of that, of that pain. Distractions can never, can never resolve that, that deeper uh, question, that deeper longing, that thing that I'm, that I'm looking for. Um, so... Uh, in the same way that a lonely person, has anyone ever felt lonely? Okay, just me? Okay, thank you. Um, in, in the same way that a lonely person isn't, uh, doesn't resolve their loneliness, doesn't solve their loneliness by just going to a crowded restaurant, they're standing in a crowd, what do they feel? They just feel more lonely, right? The bored person is lonely for themselves, the bored person is looking for that desire. They're looking for something within themselves to, to, 
to answer those, those deeper questions. And so the bored person is lonely for themselves. Uh, I have a, a hero, one of my heroes, um, in, uh, the, uh, one of my living heroes in the world is a man named uh, Jean Vanier. And Jean Vanier is a, is a Canadian uh, philosopher and humanitarian that started uh, La Arche, which are these homes for the severely disabled. And, and um, men and women, professionals, leave their vocations, they leave their careers, and about three or four or five uh, professionals, ex-doctors, ex-professors, move into a home, into a community with five or six extremely disabled people. And they just, that's it, they just commit their lives to, to caring for these people that, that can't care for themselves, they can't dress themselves, they can't. And, and, and Vanier uh, did a lot of philosophical work about desire uh, in his younger days. He was in, he was in the Navy, he was, he's a strong, now he's, he's in his 80s, but he was the strong young na naval captain and then he was a philosophy professor, but he was living with this restlessness, this hunger, this question, this appetite that he didn't know how to satisfy. And, and Vanier visited in France an asylum, and this is about 40 years ago, when, when all disabled people, to a degree, were put in some sort of institution. And he visited this asylum where there was a hundred um, institutionalized, severely handicapped men living like animals in a zoo. And he was so struck by this experience, and he was so moved on the inside by some desire that he, that he had never heard before, that he bought a home and he took two of the disabled people and he just brought them into his home. And this started a movement now and there's, there's hundreds of these large communities all over the world. And, and Vanier is really interesting because he goes around and speaks to young people all the time. And he asks young people this really simple question. What do you desire? What do you want? What do you, what do you want at the deepest level? What is your heart longing for? And he says, you know, the majority of the time, these young, intelligent, passionate people have no idea. I mean, think about it. We as a younger generation have more access. We have more opportunities. Uh, we, we, have, we have more um, opportunities to experience new things. We have more education than what our, our parents and our grandparents, things that they could only, we have more wealth things that they could have only dreamed for us. And yet, you have to ask the question, do we know what we want any more than they did? Or perhaps we're even more restless than they are. And so Vanier asks us that question, what is it that you desire? And here's, here's the funny thing about boredom and desire, is that what Vanier, what, one of the, 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 the subtle points that he makes is that only those true desires, those really deep down core desires, are the things that will sustain our lives, are the things that will uh, address the pain, that will address that deeper existential pain. Because if you think about it, um, it's only those true desires that that uh, because distractions, distractions cannot uh, meet uh, the question of a desire that I'm unclear about. Distractions can't do that. See, so, so it's this dull ache, this dull ache, a, a, a superficial desire, even success to a degree, might just lead me back all the way around to boredom again. And that's what you see happening. Even, even great leaders and successful people like Bill Gates and others, after 20 years in the business, they, they start to get a hunger for something even, even deeper. So boredom is not a question, actually, of what, what I'm doing. Boredom is not, I think, in a sense, boredom, now monotony is repeating the same action over and over again. But boredom is not a question of just idleness. 
But it's really a question of meaning. What brings my actions meaning? Why am I doing this action? What, what is the purpose for why I'm involved in this? When I was a little boy uh, and I would get bored, I'd be like, Mom, I'm bored. And my mother is normally a very nice person, but she would say, boring people get bored. <laughs> and that, that, that would mess with me. And so the long story short is that we need to ask ourselves, what, what, how do we silence these distractions? And finding that purpose, answering that question for each one of us, why am I here? What, what is going to bring my life most meaning? What desires are most going to satisfy me? Uh, that's not an easy question. And so uh, I just hope that uh, all of us are on that journey. Thank you so much for your time today.